In this tutorial, we will be setting up an Intel Edison on a Macintosh computer. I have done this a few times, so I am going to expedite the process while making it easy for a beginner to follow along. This tutorial will include... Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull up Google and we're going to search for Edison Getting Started Guide. Find the SparkFun link, it should be the first or second option. Once you're in the SparkFun page, look to the right side and find the Sections tab. Click on Download Drivers and Arduino. Scroll down the page a bit and look for the headline that says download and install the FTDI drivers. Click the link for the download. It'll take you to a page you want to scroll down into the VCP drivers section. Look for your operating system and process architecture and choose the correct download. This is going to download a DMG file to your downloads folder. Click on the package and follow the instructions. Once this installation is complete, you can go ahead and plug in your Intel Edison. We're going to update the firmware. The links below are going to provide you with the configuration tool and the latest Yocto firmware release. Once you make it to the appropriate website, you're going to download the OSX version of the configuration tool as well as the latest Yocto Puki image, which is down in the lower section here. Once those files have completed their installation, go to the downloads folder and select the appropriate application listed as Intel Edison Setup Mac. The window is going to appear. Continue to hit next. Accept the terms of license agreement and work your way until you get to the options menu where you'll be able to update the firmware release. Once you're in the options tab, you can click flash firmware. Then go to select the local image. It's going to give you the option to browse. When you click browse, travel to your downloads folder and find the IoT dev kit. Within this, you're going to find that there is a document called Edison Image Edison HDD Image. It's probably going to be the only one that you can select, so go ahead and click that. Choose open and then click next. This operation of flashing and updating is going to take about five minutes, so give it some time to work through this process. Obviously, I've sped up this video, so this is going to go a little bit quicker. You can pause if you need to. Once all the firmware has been updated, we can actually break into the Intel Edison at this point. Locate the terminal application, which comes stock on every Mac. Notice that my application might look a little bit different from yours, but it doesn't change the way that it works. In the terminal window, I want you to type ls forward slash dev forward slash tty period asterisk. This will show you the available serial ports. The option that we're looking for is a USB serial port. With an, in order to connect to the serial port, we need to type in screen space forward slash dev forward slash tty period USB serial dash whatever your eight digit serial port name is. Then press space and type in the baud rate of 115,200, then press enter. If the screen goes blank and nothing happens in the terminal window, wait a few moments, press enter, and an Edison login screen should pop up. The default Edison login is going to be root, and there should be no password at this point. You've now made it into the Intel Edison running with the Yocto project distribution, and you should be able to type a simple program in Python. I prefer to use the text editor Nano, but VI is also available. So let's go ahead and try to type in a classic print statement, hello world, and see if this works. Now we're gonna move on to configuring the Edison. Type configure, dash Edison space double dash setup. This is going to run through the basic setup procedure such as prompts for a password, Wi-Fi, and an identifying name for your Intel Edison. Once you have completed this configuration process, by the end of it, it should give you an IP address and you should write this down. It's going to be useful for using anything related to SSH. To demonstrate SSH file transfer protocol, I need to write a simple program in Python and save it to my Mac hard drive. Use whatever text editor you prefer, but for this, I will be using FUBAR. I use Cyberduck, a free file transfer program linked in the description below to send scripts from my Mac hard drive to my Edison via SFTP. Use the acquire IP address, username, and password that you have chosen during the configuration setup to connect to the Edison. All you have to do is drag and drop the Python script. The file will instantly be within the Intel Edison. Let's navigate back to the terminal window and give this a test. Type Python space and the name of the program that you were trying to run. If 
It works, perfect. Now I think an even more beneficial tool is cloning a library from GitHub. So let's make sure we have the tools to accomplish this. In terminal, type opkg install git. Okay, it appears that my git package is up to date, so I'm going to have and clone a library from GitHub for this nine degrees of freedom Spark Fun board. First, I need to type git clone, and then I need to travel back to the website, copy the URL, and paste the URL in terminal. Now I am just double checking to make sure that the example.py program actually appears to be normal and all the code is correct. Looks fine. We also need the MRAA library. So we need to travel back to GitHub, link in the description below, and follow their README tutorial. After you select README.md, scroll down until you find the section with the headline, Installing an Intel 32-bit Yocto-based OPKG image. From here, it is easy as copying and pasting each of these three lines into the terminal window and that should do all the work for you. Once you ask the Edison to install MRAA, it's gonna take a bit of time to download and update. Give it a few minutes to work through this process. After that is completed, I want you to now install NumPy. This library is a package used for scientific computing in Python. The Nine Degrees of Freedom board requires NumPy for its programming. Keep in mind that this installation process can take quite a bit of time, so I would step away for about 20 minutes Make sure that your screen stays awake and that this process completes before you turn anything off. Once Dumpy is installed, it will let you know and you will now be able to run the Nine Degrees of Freedom program to test out this gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer, temperature gauge. And as I rotate the board, the gyroscope measures angular velocity, as you can see here in this video. Thanks for joining me on the JMart. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for all of those that have not gone through this process before. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I will try to get back to them as soon as possible. Thanks again. See you next time.